Management buyouts. When might you actually do a management buyout? Okay, so you've, you've, you've built up your company, you've been running it for a number of years now, and you've got to the point where you either want to go off and do something different, or, or you want to retire, or whatever the reason may be. But you don't want to go out to the market and, and sell to them. You've got some people in your business that have worked exceptionally hard for you, and you want to actually pass it down to them. That's what morally feels right to you. And, and they're there, and they're willing, and they want to buy it. That's when you might do a management buyout. That's the obvious answer. The not so obvious answer with what, what we call management buyouts is when you've perhaps got two shareholders, um, one perhaps doing a bit more than the other, and the other wants out. And then you could do um, a, a scheme under management buyouts to, to affect this in a tax efficient way. So the easiest example of a management buyout is you've got a management team that are ready to buy your shares in your company and they've got the cash to do so. So they will simply you will sell your shares to them for the market value. That will be a chargeable gain for you. Hopefully you'll be able to claim entrepreneur's relief. That gain will be taxed at 10%. Pumminder will tell you all about entrepreneur's relief shortly. Simple. It's, it's exactly the same as if you were selling to a third party. But what about if your management team haven't got the cash to pay you now at the market value? How can you still let your management team buy your company? And I think the best way to do this is in pictures, is to explain this. And for anybody around the table who's old enough, Palminda is clearly not old enough because she didn't know who Eric Clapton was when we first uh, practiced this, will know that I'm named after an Eric Clapton song. So my company is Eric Clapton Limited, which I own 100%. And this is actually a real life example. My client, a couple of my clients have done this, and one very recently. So I own the company 100%. I've got um, a man and a woman who have been working exceptionally hard for me um, for a number of years, they've helped me build up the value of my company. And, I want, and morally, it just feels right to me that I should pass it down to them. I've been taking much more of a back step. They've been running it for me. They're more than capable. I don't want to go out to the market, pay all corporate finances to find me people. I want to sell it to them. But I know they have not got the cash to pay me market value. But I'm willing to wait some time. So what do we do? We make our, our hero one and two create their own company. Okay, so they, they go off to company's house and they create a company, own it 50-50, in this case I've called it Derek and the Dominoes. And it's Derek and the Dominoes that buys my shares in, in my company. So in Derek and the Dominoes I'll have an investment, just say it's a million pound, my shares are worth, my company is worth a million pound. Derek and the Dominoes have an investment of one million, and so now it owns Eric Clapton Limited 100%, and it has a creditor due to me of a million pounds. Okay. Now, I might be exceptionally generous and say, right, you two now own this company, but I will have, you know, I will have guarantees and debentures covering me that even if it happens in the future, I, I get my money first. And Eric Clapton Limited will continue to be run by my hero one and two, and the profits that that company makes each year will be dividend up, which is completely utterly tax-free between company to um, Derek and the Dominoes, and paid to me. So any extra cash surplus will be paid to reduce that creditor and pay me. One fundamental risk that you do need to think about is obviously I've sold my shares and that's a chargeable disposal for capital gains tax purposes. I will have got entrepreneurs relief and that will be taxable at 10% but it will be due, that tax will be due 31st of January following the tax year in which I sold my shares and I'm going to need the money to pay that, corporate, that pay that income tax bill and will they have given me enough out of that £1 million at that point to pay £100,000. So when you're structuring it, that is a vital point that you need to consider. Alternatively, what you might say to them is, look, I'm willing to fund 50% of it, but Derek and the Domino needs to go out and get a bank loan. I don't know if there's any bankers in the room at the moment. We discussed this first around sort of 18 months ago, and the bank didn't have any appetite for it at all. They had, I had credibility, the lady who owned the actual company, she had credibility, the bank obviously had history with her, history with her company, but they did not have history with Hero 1 and Hero 2, and it was just too risky for them. I had a meeting a couple of weeks ago with another bank, and they're very much more open to doing this, and we are doing that, and I think it's a, it's a, it's a change in time, you know, confidence is building up. The banks are perhaps a bit more willing to lend, I don't know if you want to say I'm, I'm wrong, but that is, that is reality. That's what happened 18 months ago, there was no appetite, and now there just seems to be more. That the banks are doing it, they're willing to, to engage in meetings and engage in these sort of structures. The second scenario I gave is when you've got 
perhaps a shareholder which you want to get rid of. So we've now got myself and Palminda owning 50-50 handbags limited. I swan about coming two days a week, don't really do a lot. Palminda's doing all the hard work, getting really fed up with me. I don't really want to be there. I've had enough. I want to go and live in Los Angeles for six months of the year and then come back here in the summer or do whatever I want to do. So Palminda says, I want you to go. And I said, that's fine, but I want to realise my 50% of my value of this company, please. And she's like, well, I haven't got the money to pay you. So what do we do? Palminda will go and set up her own company called Purses Limited here. And just suppose that in that company here is 50-50, but I've got 100 ordinary shares. Palminda's got 100 ordinary shares. When Palminda sets up Purses Limited, she will set that company up with 99 ordinary £1 subscriber shares, so £1 less than she originally had in Handbags Limited. Okay? What she will then do is a share for share exchange, so her 100 shares that she had in Handbags Limited, she will now do a share for share exchange for Purses Limited for one more share in Purses Limited. So she has now got 100 shares in Purses Limited and her 100 shares is now held um, by her, sorry, her 100 shares in Handbags Limited is now held by Purses Limited. So a bit like the other scenario, I've got, now got £100 investment in Handbags Limited and £100 share capital, effectively. Um, and then what happens is that Purses buys my shares, but it buys it at market value. Okay, so then suppose again it was a million pounds, just say. The investment then goes up by a million and you have a creditor of a million and me and Parminda have to come to arrangement with how I am going to be paid out, whether it's via a bank loan, an element of it, or whether I'm just going to accept that it's going to be done over time. Again, dividend up from the trading company, which is Handbags Limited, completely and utterly tax-free. There is stamp duty um, that you need to think about. So when Purses Limited buys my shares for me at a million pound, it is going to have to pay stamp duty at half a percent. Okay, Purses Limited will pay that. When Parminda did her share for share exchange, who got one more share for her 100 shares in handbags limited, she is going to have to pay stamp duty at half a percent. But because she only got one share, you can basically say that that share needs to be mitigated down because she's a minority shareholder. And you say, well, actually, Purses Limited has now got a huge creditor of £1 million. It's not worth as much. So you get for Parminda, you get to reduce her stamp duty that is payable.